to vote on the measure. So it hasn't passed. So the bill, H, R, A, whatever they call it, has passed the House, passed. Senate, it didn't come up yet. So it's not an official bill yet. The Senate, the sponsor in the Senate, which has yet to vote on the measure, is Richard Luger, an Indiana, Indiana Republican. The bill has the strong backing of the Clinton administration as well as such giant corporations as Tex Texaco, Coca-Cola, and Kmart. The, bill, the aim of the bill is to liberalize trade between the U.S. and Africa. What is it that Africa got they want? But they can't directly steal it anymore, right? And the, many of the African countries are dropping out of the IMF. So you've got to think of another scheme to, to dig it out. That's what it is. It would mean, among other things, to allow duty-free and quota-free exports to the United States for 10 years, support the creation of a U.S. sub-Saharan free trade agreement, and the encouragement of the Overseas Private Investment Corporation, taking some of your tax dollars to fund these big industries to do business in Africa, to set up a fund to stimulate private development in Africa. But the bill also makes some demands. The participating countries would have to adhere to a harsh and often humane requirement of the who? IMF. That's why Mandela and the African countries told Clinton the bill is unacceptable. They told him point blank. So any of us who worry about, oh, they're going to get Africa again, they told them we're not dealing with the bill. The bill only allocates $800 million to 50 African countries. What you going to do with $800 million? Israel gets $5 billion a year from the U.S. to become the ally to U.S. <coughs> Egypt gets three billion a year to keep the Suez Canal open for America. Suez Canal closed, half of all the oil and food and wood coming to Europe will be shut off. Suez Canal is critical to the West. That's why Egypt gets this. So you know 800 million is a joke. They told them so. Well, who's doing it? They said the white people didn't even want to pass it here, and the Senate said they're not going to pass it. In fact, they said they may not even take it up. We are not dealing with you black people. They told you that. Now, of course, Jesse Jackson and the rest of them, they don't know anything about this. So now we have to undergo a harsh IMF budget. You see what's going to happen to you? They're going to strangle you to death. Thus, these undeveloped and often very poor countries would have to undergo a radical economic restructuring that would include its corporate taxes, reductions of government spending, privatization of some of the most valuable assets. So you want to now come in and let them buy up your mines, your forests, your harbors, your oil wells, and the like with the multinational and other wealthy investors ready to snap up everything. You might as well burn it down to give it to them. You understand what the bill is about? Yeah. The Africans understand it, but some of us don't understand it. So we learn about whether or not the white man is going to get you. Ask Mobutu that. What does this mean to the people on the ground in these countries? He noted that the IMF structural adjustment program are already underway in some African countries and studies of this program have shown disturbing effect, and it goes on and on and on. From the point of view of the IMS and the multinational, this is excellent economic sense to sell your country to them for nothing, because we are too stupid to know that this person is coming to rip you. You don't need United States. Thank you. The trade bill also requires participating countries to join the World Trade Organization. The World Trade Organization supplants GATT. It was set up by white 
the, the seven white countries. It centered in Geneva. The white man wrote all the rules. Back to the same thing. Okay, you know why? Because you no longer want to, uh, African Asians no longer want to participate in the gap. They no longer want to participate in the IMF. They're dropping out. So now they're going to come up with a World Trade Organization, another scheme. Does that Japan? Pardon me? Does that Japan and the, the trilateral countries are the countries who have had colonies. They are your poor countries. It is the United States and Canada. It is Western Europe. And the third part is Japan. Japan is a rock. It has nothing. It had colonies. So it joined with these two to band together as a trilateral to collectivize the energy to rip your guts. Right? So of course the trilateral is part of the group against you. Because when this Africa bill goes through and the IMF money comes through, who's, whose money is the IMF money? These three are people. The trade bill also requires participating countries to, world, to join the World Trade Organization, even though many African countries have chosen not to join. Because they know what the scheme is. The Organization for Economic Development and Supporter of the World Trade, that's the white Europeans, have reported that sub-Saharan countries would be a loser under the World Trade Organization rules because countries that import more food and goes on. Four and out of ten countries, and it goes on and attempts to, to send attempts to amend the bill to modify the most onerous portions have been beaten back. So the white man said, we ain't taking nothing out of it. President Mandela of South Africa has characterized the bill as non-acceptable. At least he has said something correct since he's been there. <laughs> and the reason that I say that is because most of our women and children are still on reservations. Whites got all the mines, they got all the food, they got everything. You haven't restored anything to the women and children. But most sub-Saharan leaders face with desperate and it goes on. What I'd like to do is to conclude briefly with an analysis of the trip that Clinton took to Africa. We have 20 minutes? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> he visited Ghana, Uganda, Rwanda, South Africa, uh, uh, Botswana, and Senegal. It took him 12 days, right? You need one day to fly to Africa, one day to fly back. You need three days to fly within Africa. So five days travel. So he's now got to spend seven days visiting six countries. So he flies into Ghana six hours. Ghana is not important in the itinerary of Clinton. He flies into Uganda and he stays one day and a half. He spends three hours in Rwanda. He spends a little less than a day in South Africa. He spends a day or so in Botswana and he just Senegal is just to stay to the airport and go. So obviously Senegal, Rwanda, Botswana, South Africa is not important. What's important? What is happening in Uganda that Clinton was told to get over there? A conference, right? Who sponsored the conference? These 17 countries, Central African countries, sponsored a conference. The conference was sponsored by 17 Central African countries. The leading countries are the Congo, Uganda, and Rwanda. Who attended the conference? 50 ministers from every country in Africa. Chinese, 
Japanese, Koreans, Indians, Pakistan, Iran. What's happening? <coughs> Why are all of these countries coming to this conference of African people? Is there something happening here that we don't know about, we weren't told about? Clinton was told by the business establishment, you must attend this conference in Uganda. Something is happening here. What is happening? What is it that these 17 Central African countries have that the United States and the world needs? Minerals. The minerals that come from the lower two-thirds of Africa, 90% of all known minerals in the world come there. If most of the minerals that you need, like cobalt, zinc, copper, platinum, they're located in different countries, but they're mainly in the Congo, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Angola, Rwanda, Mozambique, and some in South Africa. All most of the minerals at this point come through Africa through a railroad system that passed through South Africa. That's the way they set it up. It is calculated that if the minerals do not leave Africa, that Western Europe will economically collapse in six months. <clears throat> Japan, six months. United States, less than a year. You can't make a computer, a fax machine, a rocket. You can forget it. So that means that those or who controls the natural resources are what? They are the key players in the world's what? Economy. See, you play with the stock and bonds, give me some cobalt, some diamonds, some nickel to make the world one. Who used to control these? We used to have to come to the United States and England. But who now controls it? Africans. No, but let us go on to try to answer the question, do we hopefully control it? <laughs> Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When South Africa was here, South Africa was running uh, border raids across the South African and destroying everything in Angola, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Zambia, and Mozambique. Kept everything destabilized, right? Yes, sir. Mobutu, with the, with the West, had a war going into, was keeping Congo Brazzaville under the French, had a war going into Uga Sudan, had a war going into Uganda, mm -hmm. was an integral part of Rwanda. Mm -hmm. Did we kill, could we have killed the million in less than six months? or what germ warfare or European genocidal policy was put in Rwanda. Let us not believe that we killed all those people. They had a war going in, you know, Savimbi in Angola, right? Yes, sir. So two thirds of Africa was kept in a status, virtual state of war. Now if you were in a state of war, you can't get together. Plus. They had stripped your country because the Germans controlled one-fifth of the Congo and they were stripping everything they could. Yes, sir. So we were in pretty bad shape. Angola was the only country in the southern African region that could challenge South Africa because Angola had oil. And with oil, you can buy what you want. So Angola, because of its population and the oil, was a threat to South Africa because they could buy tanks, airplanes. So United States and the West policy was to have South Africa constantly strike Angola from the south, and Savimbi would come from the, from the Congo and strike them from the north, and keep Angola destabilized. 
when the when the they had the civil war in Angola, and a group got in that wasn't favorable to the United States, they really pushed in against them. Angola was almost toppled. The Russians did not help Angola. For some reason, the OAU didn't help Angola. And Nigeria didn't help Angola. Who helped? Trooper came in, stabilized the situation with weapons, with 50,000 plus troops, with tanks, airplanes, etc., right? In 1990, they had a big war in the southern part of the Congo, of, of uh, Angola, and, the, and uh, Lombe shows you the picture. Kunte Konavali is when the African, Angolan, and the African Cuban destroyed 100,000 men of the best white army they could put there. That's South Africa, that's Israel, that's France, a bit the best. We destroyed them. When we destroyed them, they were going to push into South Africa. Yes, sir. But the American them said to Angola and Cuba, can we make a deal? <laughs> and they said, OK. The agreement was that Angola and Cuba would not push into South Africa, but the condition was they had, South Africa had to release Namibia on the road of independence. Yes. That's how Namibia got independent. That's right. And that South Africa had to do what to all political prisoners? That's how Mandela and everybody got out. They didn't get out because of the sanctions right. or because your demonstration is because of this agreement. Right. And that South Africa had to be put on the road of independence. That's, right. That's how they got. So what they did was they stopped the whites from all of these countries all of a sudden were brought to a state of peace. So once when you stop fighting, you can talk. But meanwhile, you have this problem here. So when you first heard of Kabila moving across. Now you know that the United States and NATO intervened about three or four times to stabilize Mobutu. Mm -hmm. But when you heard them moving, there was no NATO intervention. Then the United States says that the Congolese troops were not winning the war on their own, they had help. Mm -hmm. That was to admit that they couldn't do it on their own and then they, they, they held back. Because that was an admission that the Congolese troops were getting help, right? Mm -hmm. So what they found out later, that what troops combined to get rid of Mobutu? Angola, troops, tanks, planes. Uganda pushed in. Troops, tanks, planes. 17 countries pooled their resources to get rid of Mobutu. Africans were working on a pan-African relationship. Who supported this move? Eritrea, Ethiopia, Southern Sudan, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Tanzania, and Uganda, and Angola, and Congo. The Africans were on the move. That's why they didn't intervene, because they knew what was going to happen. Because the whites already were destroyed here. And you know what we did to them up in Somalia. They knew they could not intervene against that powerful military force, and they swept them out. It is these 17 countries that collectivize their energies to get rid of Mobutu are now in a regional economic block. And it is these 17 countries who are regional economic bloc who call the conference. They say they're no longer Francophone or Frenchmen. They're no longer Anglophone. Right. They are Bantu-phone. <laughs> OK? <laughs> and as a result of this military victory, yes. with these countries pooling their resources, that's why these natural resources are under your control. Kabila has traveled to Switzerland probably to work out something with the Swiss to get back some of the money from Mobutu. Yes, he has been to Japan, China, Korea, making their arrangement. But he has not gone to Western Europe. He has not gone to America. Right. So now America's complaining that they can't establish a relationship with him. But what is, why is it critical? Because if you want cobalt for your jet engines, you want diamonds, you got to deal with them. But now you must come to Africa under the terms of these countries. 
So Clinton was sent there specifically to go there to beg. Okay, he was begging. Because they don't have to deal with him because whatever you need in the world, you can get from other people. But the United States could not have you see that Clinton was sent just to Uganda. So they had to make it sound as if he was on this African tour. You know how they disguise it? And so he can drop into anger, Uganda, and try to check out what's happening. But of course they had to load up his thing with all these black folks, wrangled and the rest of them, the smoke screen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So it is these two events. Cuba was the pivotal country to get Angola, the dominant military force here which then led to this additional force to do this. And if you listen to the foreign minister of Angola and the Congo and the rest of them, you will see why these are under their country. So now, as we conclude, you now have Angola with about 250,000 men under arms. The Congo said they're going to put 250,000 men under arms. Ethiopia, whatever they have, 50,000 men under arms. Nigeria, about 200,000 men under arms. And Egypt has about 200,000 men under arms. Now, I don't know about South Africa because they're still under white control, so I don't count them. <laughs> so you can see we're beginning to be well armed. Yes. So there should be no more interventions in it. And how do you know? It's because the foreign minister of Congo told you at the UN that they are not going to allow Savimbi to operate. They're going to get him. Yes, sir. 5,000 troops from Angola crossed the Congo and stopped the civil war in Congo Brazzaville. Nigeria, with Ghana, sent in troops to stop the civil war in Liberia and to stop the civil war in Sierra Leone. So what you're now having is African regional power taking care of their own problems. And now they begin to regionalize along economic blocks so that they're first trading among themselves and they're working with the rest of the world and they primarily bypass the United States and the World Bank. Good. And later on another time we'll show you the articles where the, United, where the IMF is going to suspend the Congo from the IMF because they want the Congo to pay them 14 billion that Mobutu and they stole. And the claim, Kabila and them already said, look, when you find the money that you stole with Mobutu in your banks, you give it to us, and we'll give you back some. And, they, and Kabila wants to know where are all the roads and stuff that you use, this money that you loan with him, where show me? So what they have done is this. Congo, Rwanda, and Uganda are now in a road building project. Right. And what they're doing now is the people are going to build the roads. Yes, they're going to hide, they're going to take the local people, they say in conjunction with the chiefs, mm -hmm. and they're going to rebuild the roads, they're going to give the people axes, picks, shovels, and they're going to pay them. So they're going to rebuild the road system without a dime from the IMF. So this is how they're beginning to break the link. And with you controlling the natural resources, you no longer have to come to anybody for anything. And the world has radically changed. And this is where we are progressing and we are moving. And these are some of the basic facts and understanding that we have to have to assess where we're going. And when you listen and you hear that Nigeria is beginning to build a pipeline all across West Africa, Togo, Benin, Ghana, Ivory Coast, and what it's going to do is to make it possible for you to begin to industrialize. And here, the New York Times, they talk about Nigeria. With all of the internal problems, and they're talking about Nigeria, the regional power that will help to bring a regional economic order to that part of the world. We got problems, we're going to work it out. But we got people, we got natural resources, we got oil and fuel. So when they lay down that pipeline across West Africa, and they start the industrial process, Nigeria is richer than South Africa. It's just that in South Africa, they developed it. 
They just didn't even touch what's in Nigeria. So what's coming is the fact now that Nigeria has replaced the English and the Americans. And I'm gonna read you just one short paragraph from here. And it says here, the international West Africa trembles with Nigeria. Two minutes and we're finished. The international commitment. No fewer than seven African head of states rushed to Nigeria when Abacha died. <laughs> South Africa and Egypt may have more of a powerful army, but no African, now this is from the white man. <laughs> okay? This is his asset, their assessment. And you assume that this is the, they want to be as 